Ladies and gentlemen out there in podcast land, I just wanted to take a quick minute before we get started uh, to say a very, very happy birthday to the Switch It Up show because this is episode Sweet 16. And you are joined by myself, of course, Glenn, with my wonderful host, Setrav. Setrav, how are you doing on our 16th uh, birthday, kind of, in a way? Not really. I'm doing super well, super sweet. You know, my man. Uh, a little too sweet, I might say. Ooh. Is that a wrestling reference? It isn't. Yeah, that. it is, man. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. And hopefully, you guys aren't going to find anything wrong with this action, like, content-packed episode because there's just a lot of things to get through but first of all the first thing we need to get through is the next like i don't know 10 seconds of the song so excuse me while i enjoy Now, if you're wondering, like, every time we do that and we, like, drag the music out, if you think to yourself, like, man, I find that super annoying, you don't just have to think it. You can actually vocalize it by reaching out to us over on Twitter, at Switch It Up Show. I will take all of your complaints, all of your criticism, and I will just, I'll just bask in it. So if you've got it, go ahead and send it our way. And, of course, you know, we always do appreciate a compliment. Uh, anything really um a lot of times we read this like as we're playing some games and so i figured we'd talk about uh kind of what we're playing in our segment affectionately called the inventory so mr trav why don't you go ahead and hit me with what you've got going on this week on the switch uh this week i was playing a little bit more of uh double dragon uh double dragon four i've been really digging it uh tried again to get through it still haven't beat it but i'm working on it having a good time with double dragon um also playing splatoon still you know you gotta check in you gotta you gotta make a few purchases using the nintendo app uh i picked up some sweet galoshes that's one thing uh i think the nintendo app does really well i really like its integration with splatoon and kind of how like you know every like every hour it seems like there's new there's new stuff to pick from you know Mm -hmm. i think it's just super i think it's super cool um, Having a good time with it. What about you, man? What are you playing? So this week, you know, I'm, I I really kind of am starting to dig on um, a game we covered last episode called Physical Contact Speed, where it's kind of like <laughs> solitaire. I, I don't know, dude. It's quick and it's it's just fun. And I don't know, it's a good way for uh, to to kill some time. I'm having a good time with it, even though it's super basic. Uh, if you haven't listened to that episode, go ahead, listen to episode 15 and talk all about physical contact speed. Um, another game that I've just started to kind of mess around with that I hear a lot of people are really enjoying is that Mario vs. Rabbids game. Um, I did end up grabbing that uh, over on Amazon. Nice. Um, it's pretty cool. It's really like a real-time strategy game, which I did not know, um, you know, before going into it. But it is pretty neat. Like, it, I feel like it might be a real-time strategy game for people who might not like those types of games. I think the Mario theme really kind of helps, um, and they kind of walk you through it. It gets a little bit more difficult as you go on, as you would, you know, hope it would. But not every game's like that. But if you're looking for kind of like a game to kind of maybe get you into that genre, I feel like Mario vs. Rabbids might be might be a good way to do it. Uh, hopefully, but I don't know if there's any real-time strategy games on the Switch right now. Actually, um, uh, there's a lot. This of... thing has got to be like the Sega. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess that you really know, is kind of the same. One. Yeah, that one's like a good combination of like you know RPG and real-time strategy. Real-time strategy. A lot of those, um, you know, JRPGs are kind of end up being like that. Uh, but yeah, um, if you guys uh, are playing anything that you're really kind of all about this week, again, let us know over on Twitter. We would love to hear from you over on at switch it up show love it thank you sir thank you i'm trying you know there's a lot a lot to do here a lot to do i got the mixer going on i got your wonderful face in front of me i'm reading the notes a lot of things going on just like there's a lot of things going on in potent power-ups our news segment now there is one thing here that i am super excited about that got announced this week and that's the fact that doom is actually going to be coming out on the switch I think this is super cool. Um, this is the newest uh, take on Doom from ID Software. And Doom, like the original one, was probably one of the first games I really got into over on the PC. And I really had a good time with Doom on PS4. Uh, it's super fast, so I am anxious to see how 
uh, the Switch handles it. Um, I don't know how much it's going to cost. They haven't really announced pricing for it yet. Uh, although they did confirm that there's going to be a digital and a physical edition. And the art that they chose for it is like throwback old Doom art. Uh, so it looks really it looks really cool. I'm excited for it. What do you think about Doom coming to the Nintendo Switch? I think it's pretty awesome because there's that old sort of... Uh... I don't know what it is. It's kind of like an urban legend, I guess, a little bit, or it's like a challenge, I guess, that everyone makes to themselves where, like, you say if it has a screen, you can play Doom on it. Um, <laughs> I've seen, like, people, like, put Doom on, like, car systems, on, like, camera, like, Canon camera battery packs. Um, so to see Doom come to the Switch is pretty awesome. I've seen a lot of comparison photos between the PS4 uh, version of Doom and the Switch version just from the trailers and the only thing that really seems different is that you can't um, see the shadows really as well on the Switch hmm. but it's really not that you know big of a difference it's it's pretty close to any other version of Doom I guess that you're getting except like I said it's just a little brighter um, yeah I'm, I'm in I'm super stoked for it I love Doom uh, Doom Guy was one of the first awesome things. There were so many games that came out after the fact that really copied the style of Doom. I remember there was a Chex Mix game that came with Chex Mix and it played exactly like Doom. But <laughs> if you were like Captain Chex Mix or some nonsense, it was awesome. Sounds um, delicious. It was. It was a deliciously fun affair. Uh, so yeah, stoked to see Doom again. Uh, are you as excited about the fact that also something else confirmed this week is that there's going to be cross-platform um, play for Rocket League with the Nintendo Switch. So you should be able to play uh, with some of your friends on different systems. Are you still playing the Rocket League Life over on PS4? I'll tell you what, man. I actually am not. I ha it's been a good minute since I picked up anything to do with Rocket League. We Me got too, it free man. on PS4. It was the first place to drop. Um, it... We paid money for it, though. We paid a little bit to get those Back to the Future cars. You gotta buy it. You gotta, gotta love it. No you know, question you about it. DeLorean, and it was and it was an awesome time. But I, it's just better things, you know. Like Rocket League is cool and all, but I, I, I just have I have a better time with other stuff. I'm with you, dude. Like I really do like. I had a good. I had a great time playing Rocket League, but. And that game is still super big, like in terms of uh, like streaming and stuff like that. It's still popular. A huge player base. Um, but like, it's one of those games that I feel like. I mean, like you and I, we played, and we're like, we were like, we were okay in the okayest we of terms. Okay. Like we would win sometimes, we would lose. I feel like most times. Um, but either way, it was still fun. But if you're playing that game now, you're probably like a champion at it. So you're going pro. Like, not only am I going to get destroyed by people on a Nintendo Switch, I can get destroyed by people on PS4 and Xbox. So. That's uh, that's a little intense. Um, it's still cool that they're opening it up to it because maybe they'll kind of start. Um, maybe one day we'll be able to play with everybody on every console. It's a dream, but we'll see. Uh, super cool. Yeah, man. And then lastly, just a small piece of information to share. Um, do you know what the top-selling console was for the month of August? Was it in fact the Nintendo Switch? It absolutely was, sir. It absolutely was. Nintendo making all the money in the month of August and satisfying that demand or coming close to it. So um, makes me excited to see what's next. More people buy the Switch, the more people uh, put games on the Switch. And speaking of games coming out on the Switch, <laughs> it is time for Press Continue where we cover all the new releases. And ladies and gentlemen, sit back and buckle up because there are a ton to get through. And the first thing that we're going to go ahead and start off with is Beach Buggy Racing. Now, we are actually going to be talking about this in the near future over um, right here on the Switch It Up show. And Beach Buggy Racing is like an off-road uh, kart racing game where you get to race, collect, and upgrade to win. They say drive into an action-packed, surprise-filled world of off-road kart racing mayhem. Race against a field of rival drivers, each with unique personalities and special abilities. Build a collection of crazy power-ups like Dodgeball Frenzy, Fireball, and Oil Slick. Un upgrade and unlock a variety of cars from doom buggies to monster trucks um it sounds awesome um the graphics actually look pretty look pretty good it looks like it's it looks like it's fun it looks like it's obviously inspired by mario kart but you know what mm -hmm. if you're gonna be inspired by a game mario kart's a good place to start man good um 9.99 beach buggy racing we'll look for it on an upcoming episode uh next thing is gonna be super quick because you know i feel like everybody knows what this is about and it's nba 2k 18 
Um, you know, if you are into basketball, NBA 2K is kind of like one of the largest and like most popular franchises that's still going on. Um, 2K always made some pretty good sports games, um, especially back in the Dreamcast days. Uh, but yeah. I'm a little, I'm just the fact that I'm saying that there were games on Dreamcast for good. I'm a little bit behind on my 2K games. Uh, but it's cool to see that like, you know big sports titles coming out to the Switch. Uh, it is sixty dollars. If you're all about NBA 2K18, then you are in for a good time. I was a bigger NBA Street fan. Uh, yeah, let's let's talk about NBA Jam, bro. Like that's that's that really it. that's From really downtown. What exactly, dude. I quote that in like everyday life. You do. Uh, thank you. Uh, Quest of Dragons is going to be the next game, which I think we'll also be talking about in an upcoming episode. That's uh, right. Quest of Dragons is eight dollars ninety nine cents on the eShop, and they say Quest of Dragons is a turn based. Oh, uh, here we go. Turn-based dungeon crawler game, a roguelike featuring a good old 16-bit retro artistic look. And I can confirm from the screenshots, it very much does look like that. But it looks mm-hmm. good. Um, it's 16-bit, but like the gra- like they did a good job. Like, it looks nice. Um, an evil dark lo- lord has stolen all the light. Throw- Shout out to Destiny. So your mission is to <laughs> enter his lair and defeat him. Play either as a warrior, a wizard, an assassin, or a shaman. Uh, you have to traverse dungeons, defeat enemies, and loot everything you can in order to survive. That sounds like it's right up your alley, man. Um, oh, absolutely, man. I'm super stoked to play this one. I'm going to start it up tomorrow, actually. Do, and when they say light, they actually mean like, like each level uh, is like kind of like covered in darkness. Uh, so like it looks it looks pretty cool. I think it looks yeah. like a good time. Uh, we'll definitely be covering that in the future. Eight ninety nine Quest of Dragons. And believe it or not, we got one, two, three. We got four more of these things. So, so buckle up. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hit you with a little bit of those tunes. Tunes one more time. Next up is Semispheres. We'll be talking about this one on an upcoming episode. This is nine dollars and ninety nine cents in the eShop. And Semispheres, Semispheres oh, is a meditative parallel puzzle game that places dual realities at the heart of its challenge. Um, it is a unique single-player split-screen mechanic allows you to challenge your brain by putting you in control of two characters at the same time. Your left and right stick must work together to unfold the mystery by solving clever puzzles in an entrancing, uh, an entrancing ambiance. Ooh. Uh, it actually looks like... Um, it kind of looks like maybe like flower or like what's the company that makes that that made flower? They make a bunch of that game company. Yeah, that game company. Um, it, <laughs> uh, it looks like a ha- it's like kind of hand drawn uh, type graphics with all these like semispheres uh, on the screen. Um, mm-hmm. The control scheme kind of makes me think of Death Squared, where like one stick controls one thing and one stick controls another, but they're both kind of have to be operated at the same time. Uh, okay. It looks pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to play this and check it out. Nine dollars ninety nine cents in the eShop semi spheres. Next up is Kingdom New Lands. I'm telling you, this is this is this is a good problem to have that there's just too many games. Uh, <laughs> Kingdom New Lands. It says Kingdom New Lands is built upon the award winning gameplay and mystery of of Kingdom by introducing an abundance of new content into the IGF nominated title while maintaining the simplicity and depth that the legions of monarchs have come to experience and enjoy. Travel to new lands and welcome new dolge of um, minions, merchants, and vagrants that these isles call home, but be wary of the new obstacles that threaten your arrival. So this kind of looks like it's um almost like maybe like deluge. a... Deluge. Yeah. A dolge. <laughs> Sorry. Does it say deluge? Did I even read yeah, it? Yeah, deluge. Maybe. There's, like a, dull. there's a lot going on here, ladies and gentlemen, okay? There's a lot to get through. The music's yeah. going quick. All right, this game, like, apparently they don't really introduce you to, you know, the backstory. They kind of just tell you that this is, like, in, like, it's not, maybe it's not a remake, but it's almost like a remastering with additional content. So I'm not familiar with the original game Kingdoms, but if you are and you're all about Kingdom New Lands, go ahead and reach out to us over on Twitter and tell me what I'm missing. Uh, it is $14.99 in the eShop. Go ahead and check it out. And now we're going to jump down from $14.99 down to $2.99. Ooh. Yeah, that's that's the price, man. That's 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 where I'm talking about. And we're going to talk about 36 Fragments of Midnight. This time, What Mid- else we're going to talk about on a golf episode? Something else, right? This time, Midnight's friends lost their star fragments. Your task is to find them, take them back, but it won't be easy. In this procedurally generated platform game, you have to avoid deadly lasers, circular saws, and spikes to collect all the fragments to get their greatest gift. Do you have what it takes to collect them all? I just want to take a moment and appreciate the fact that I said procedurally generated perfectly. So I was going to compliment <laughs> you on that fact. I thank was, you. You said that with without a, a hesitation and gusto. Thank you. Like I may be a straight up adult, but you know I still get tripped up over a word now and then. 
Hey, and it then, happens, man. Yeah. Lastly, lastly, we've we've come we've uh, we've arrived is Robo Knots <laughs> for thirteen dollars and forty nine cents on the eShop. Um, Another game we uh, will do on an upcoming episode. This game, this game looks this game looks gorgeous. Looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. I didn't even get down to the description yet, but the graphics look awesome. Um, it says, jump between planets, fight weird creatures, and save the galaxy alone or with a friend. The action combines familiar arcade shooting gameplay with a unique possibility to switch gravity. That sounds awesome. Color graphics appeal to both younger and adult players, while first-class music by Simon Volkand makes the adventure feel even more epic. Um, oh. It says, great for the whole family, solo and multiplayer, 12 unique planetary systems, a large variety of weapons and enemies, explosive art style and graphics, epic music, and easy to play, yet challenging. Looks like a good time. Robo We're going to have to play together. Yeah, man. It looks like fun. It looks like... With a friend. With a friend. I guess you qualify. Yeah, for that review. guess you qualify. Uh, Robonauts, $13.49. Weird price. Looks like a good game. Go ahead and check it out over on the eShop. Whew. Man. I'm running, I'm, running out of, games, man. I'm running out of breath dude that's great um yeah it certainly is so now we're gonna go ahead and slide over into the let's play segment where we talk about some of the games that are like our main focus this is kind of like our like own little mini review of uh games and we're actually gonna go ahead and right. hit you with two and mr trav i just need a minute to catch my breath so if you wouldn't okay. mind um we're gonna talk about tumble seed and rocket fist and i'm gonna go ahead and let you kind of pick whichever one we're going to first so go ahead man um, I feel like I want to do the one I didn't like Ooh, more cold, cold. first. I want to get that one out of the way if I, if I could. Brutal. Brutal. Um, and that's got to be Tumble Seed. Okay? Uh, and this is one of the first times that we've gotten to play. We've both gotten to play the same game. Um, so we can review it together. I had a really difficult time with this, mainly because it's a puzzle puzzle game. You know, I love my basic games. You know, basic boy gaming over here. There he is. Me on Twitter. Follow us. Uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel. See us play it. Um, it is very basic. You know, you're a C. You're a circular thing, and you have to use both control sticks to raise and lower the left side of this platform you're on or the right side of this platform you're on. And the platform always stays with you, and you just, you know, you keep going up and trying to go into different things throughout the levels, and it's kind of puzzly. Um, I couldn't find any section or setting that would allow you to make this motion controlled and use the gyroscope inside um i felt like an idiot because i feel like this game was designed to use the gyroscope um that being said i feel like i used they give you a level so that way you can tell when you're actually straight and your platform straight on so you won't keep rolling i feel like i looked at the level more than i actually looked at the gameplay um this was just kind of frustrating overall the game itself was was fairly frustrating and I feel like it would have played better as just a game. Like, I don't even need to roll anywhere. I could have bounced around and actually used the sticks. But no, you know, it it, it was just, it, it wasn't very fun for me, um, unfortunately. Uh, very pretty. Music's nice, but it, I just did not have a good time. I kind of, I, I hate to say it, man, but I feel like I have to kind of echo your thoughts on Tumble Seed. The game itself, like, it looks, it looks really good. The graphics are nice. Um, I like the... Really? I, I like how as you kind of like ascend uh, the mountain, like you can go into different areas and you get to unlock different powers to help you like get through some of the obstacles. Um, mm -hmm. But you know the control scheme of using the sticks, like it's a it's a it's a cool idea. Um, I like how as you're moving through the level, you kind of like you know you have to you have to use both of them at the same time. It's almost like for those people who like aren't quite sure what we're talking about. It's almost like if you had like a long like two by four, and in the middle of it you put a ball, and uh, you were trying to pick up at the ends of it, and it was the ball was going like left. Do you remember and right. those old marble games that you get yes. at like a dentist's office? Yeah, it's like that. You know, like you're sitting in a waiting room somewhere, and you have to get the marble ball to go through things. Imagine if you could only go up or down, and the ball had to continue moving forward and up, but it had to go round things. And you can only bring it down left or right. It's it was weird. It's a it's a weird the play mechanic is just not fun. Yeah, it's 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 the difficult. Ball things are more fun. It's difficult, man, because like the ball is technically like the seat is like always rolling one way or another, which is the whole, which mm -hmm. is the to be fair, that's the whole game. Yeah, it's the whole game. The the idea is that you have to you know work against the the gravity and make adjustments as you you know progress throughout the game. Very um, fickle. That seat. It's super. It's super. I like, feel like it sensitive. picks up speed. And it's very very sensitive. 
um, it, it, it made me want to, like, because I went into the settings, and the first thing I thought of, just like you did, was, like, there's got to be, like, some type of motion controls, because then maybe mm-hmm. I could just tilt it. But I guess maybe the way that they, maybe they decided not to do that, because, like, you know, you could tilt left and right, but how do you move the plank up and down? You know, like, uh, I mean, maybe I would have used this, maybe, like, if I had motion controls, step. I could use just the stick. one step. Exactly. The whole game one step um yeah just use one of them um that would have been better i even tried to kind of increase the sensitivity because sometimes mm-hmm. i felt like the ball was rolling too slow and other times i felt like it was moving way too fast um yep. so like it was a little like it was a little weird for me to kind of figure out that momentum um although i mean if you you know if you like puzzle games and you kind of like like the idea of like the balance see the problem is like this game screams to have the motion controls like it's dying for that gyroscope and that option just isn't there um, you know, and if we're if we're missing it, then that then we are like we're, we're idiots, which is always a possibility. But I'm checking oh, over. That's, that's I'm che- I'm checking over here, um, like online, just to double check myself because you know I want to. I don't want to you know, say anything, but it it really doesn't look like there's any gyroscope controls for it, and it needs it. It needs it, man. Um, Tumble seed. Um, for like for me personally, and all these reviews are you know just for me. Like this is a two for me, man. Like if it had a gy- dude, I was gonna say the exact same. It's if, a two. If it had a gyroscope uh, controls, like the game wouldn't be for me, but it wouldn't be like I don't think it's bad. It's just it needs better controls. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's kind of that's kind of step one. I yeah. agree. The control is just not fun to play uh, for me. Uh, exactly everything everything we said. Two. Awesome, dude. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, Rocket Fist uh, if we can? Yeah. I'm- What's the best way to explain Rocket Fist? You think? Um, you said something to me the, the other day, and I was like, "Game of pool that you'll ever play." Yes, yes, I, I would, I would agree with you on that one. Yeah. So Rocket Fist is interesting. Um, basically, I'm trying to figure out how I can describe this. What are you like? Almost like a little like robot in a way. It's like it's like BattleBots meets uh, yeah, there you go. Pool Hall Hustler. There you go. Um, so you're going through. Um, kind of level by level every level is a little bit different i'm gonna read you the synopsis it says rocket fist is an arena game with crazy robots and a chaotic rocket fist battles aim against your frenemies and prove your dexterity by killing each other with rocket propelled fists um in this frantic mix of dodgeball and billiards so there we go there's a good way there is okay there is a good way to word it um every single level uh, is different and as you clear the level um like these little portals open up and you can kind of drop down and go uh into the next one um but basically um you start off as this robot without any fists at all it's just Mm -hmm. uh it's just kind of you and the fists kind of start to appear and like float around the level and what you have to do is there's a couple like bots that are also trying to come after you if you're playing single player and they are also trying to go after the fists Uh, so as you're moving around with one stick you're aiming with the other and pressing a button in order to shoot the fist off so you can hit the uh, hit the bots kill them all and then move on to the next uh, move on to the next level uh, it's a simple you know it's a simple type of uh, mechanic but it's not necessarily easy to pull it off it takes a little while before you figure out the aiming but once you do it gets pretty good um, I personally had a lot of luck with trying to go as quickly as possible and once I figured out I can actually roll into some of the bots and like cause them to freeze that helped me out a lot too mm-hmm um, but I did have a lot of fun playing this game, and I think this game would be like it can play up to four people, and this game like screams like couch multiplayer to me. Uh, I think it would be a lot of fun playing this game with a lot of other people. Um, it reminds me almost of like um, almost like in Mario Kart where you have uh, where you're doing like the balloon battle, which by the way is the best uh, form of multiplayer <laughs> in Mario Kart, and you're just kind of like throwing the shells uh, at people, like mm-hmm. trying to make them lose. That's exactly what you're doing in this game, except you know you're down to your last balloon and you have to go grab the shells and throw them at somebody. Um, that that's probably a better that's that 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 explanation works for me anyway. But I had a, I had a lot of fun with Rocket Fist. I think it's uh, I think the graphics look good. I think the game is just fun, and it made me want to play it with more people. Like I played yes. this and I was like, yo, this is like this is really cool. Um, I don't believe it has like an online component where i could just like match up and play with other people um yeah i wasn't seeing it um that would be that would be really cool um i bet you this is also i feel like this game could end a few friendships uh because i bet you there's uh you you have some friends who are like who would end up being like really really good at this Um, if you've ever fought with someone over pool you would 
a hundred percent fight with them over playing this game. Yeah, this thing is this this thing is fun, and there's always like a few uh, extra bots on the screen, so you really need to kind of keep an eye on what's happening because it's dude, you gotta watch it. And they don't like they don't take it easy on no. you either. Like they're, they, these things are flying everywhere, mm-hmm. and they and they're they're pulling off like bank shots and like that's where the mm-hmm. pool part comes in because these things like have a good amount of momentum to them, and when they hit the wall, they bounce and they don't just stop right away. They they're always almost always moving. Very very rare that they're ever just stopped because everything's moving around and the bots are moving around and the balls are moving around and you're moving around like it's easy to for, like for something to happen uh but i think this game is like fast-paced exciting um i had a, I had a good time with this game um i would definitely recommend this uh especially if you have a bunch of people to play it with uh, it's only nine dollars and 99 cents for me i think this is a I, I give this a happy solid four I agree. I I would give this a four as well. Very, very solid game. If you've got friends you want to play with uh, on your couch or just to take the switch around with you, definitely pick up Rocket Fist. Yeah, man. Like I, I, I can't I can't really say enough about it. But uh like let us know what you think about Rocket Fist. Let us know what you think about Tumble Seed. Let us know what you think about any of the games that we talked about over on this episode of the Switch It Up show. Um we would love to hear from you. You can reach out, out to us over on Twitter at Switch It Up Show for both myself and Mr. Seth Trav. If things get boring, just go ahead and switch it up. 